Hello, Crusader, and good day to you. You are within the land of Avalon in the Avalon Adventure board game. Your heroes have just journeyed to the ancient runes. Reading off the adventure card in the Avalon Adventure board game. As your heroes pass by the ancient runes, the moonlight illuminates a crude etching of skulls upon the two massive doors. You roll the d12 and two is the result. Battle. Randomly select two heroes. As these two heroes ascend the small stone stairway to the massive wooden doors of the runes, two skeletal grunts come bursting out, shattering the doors into pieces. Each hero must combat a skeletal grunt. And to be continued. Hello everyone, how are you doing? It is of course Roger, Grubus Games Unlimited. And welcome to this very special video I've been wanting to do for you. Um, before we get into what the heck is this giant cloth map of Avalon doing here, as some of you longtime crusaders know, you already know what this is, but I think there's a lot of new people um, that might not know about this. So first of all, as always, welcome. Um, I hope all of you are doing great. You're having a good summer, staying safe, of course. And we have some new subscribers to the channel, and so welcome. We are very happy that you're here. I think you're gonna enjoy this video. And these are my favorite videos, you know, where I can just talk and there's nothing scripted, and I'm feeling very elated and very excited and quite corbantic tonight, so look out. But anyway, I hope everyone's doing good. And as the title says, we're gonna shift over here. And look, I even had the battle set up for you. I hope you like that. That was, um, we'll try to get this camera down. There you go. So I had this little battle set up um, for, the, for the, uh, one of the adventure cards, double-sided, of course. 259 unique encounters, battles, events. So I just wanted to give you a little taste um, of one of the events in there. And so we random, you know, you have a party of six heroes, randomly selected Sir Brennus, our night hero, and there's Zeke, our wizard, and they were gonna be combating the two skeletal grunts. There you go, kind of a close-up shot for you. I love this game. I, I won't tell you again how much I loved creating this game. Choose your own adventure, it's totally replayable. You'll never see the same game twice. So um, there was the D12 that we rolled, and I said you rolled a two. Um, but anyway, I just wanted to let you see that. Quick little battles. Um, in this game, and I think you're really, really going to enjoy this um, game. And then, of course, after you're done playing the Avalon Adventure board game, you import all of your heroes, if they survive in the land of Avalon, into Dungeon Crusade. So we're starting off this special video with a little bit of this. And I so happen to have, look at that, the board for the Avalon Adventure board game. So that's where they were. Actually, let me grab this. I'm in a very good mood, guys, because you know the news that we got, and there's a video about it uh, right here. So as your heroes, of course, move through Avalon, this is the flag. So they were right here at the ancient runes. And there's a bunch of different outcomes on the adventure cards. Um, you roll a D12 if it's unexplored. And so that's, you know, when, when your heroes journey across Avalon, you're gonna put red tracking tokens um, to remember where your heroes have been. And um, you have to find the, rune, the three runes of eternity. I'm going to stop talking because you guys know how passionate I am about this game. I think you guys are going to love this. 
Um, so I just wanted to start that off, kind of like a little welcome to everyone, and we're going to get going with this very special video. So, I was kind of long-winded, but it's the Avalon Adventure Board game, and you know how I am with that. So let's move this over here and talk about this video I think you're going to enjoy. Okay, perfect, and you got that, perfect. I'm gonna put this stuff away. So what I wanted to do with you, there has been a lot of people talking, of course, you know, the game's being printed right now and it's shipping out directly after it's printing, after it's done being printed, rather. There's been a lot of people that asked how to store this game. And you know me, I mean, I'm there for, for anything you guys need. Actually, I think I'll pull this back a little bit. I'm gonna put it here. How about like that? Okay, cool. That's good. Let me put these dice away. Um, but there's a lot of people asking, how do you store Dungeon Crusade? You know, there's, there's a lot of stuff to this game. And we did that um, deluxe unboxing of this, you know, when the manuf our awesome manufacturer sent us the proof copy of the game. So it's kind of buried in that video. And I think we're going to move this back, hopefully a little more. So I don't have y'all like right up in there. I think that's much better. Yes, it is. Much better. Okay, so anyway, we did that deluxe unboxing, and I kind of, I didn't skim over it, but, you know, I showed you real quickly about the plastic compartment trays and um, how to store it. So this video, um, and we're going to be doing another one when we get the final version, um, which, you know, hopefully I might have very soon. We're going to do not like an in-depth one, but I'm going to do an unboxing, and then, of course, be there with you. I'm going to teach you how to set everything up. Um, you know, briefly show you how to break it apart. Um, but then, you know, we're going to, I'm going to be right there with you. We're going to open the final version together. We're going to break it apart quickly. And then I'm going to teach you, of course, how to set everything up, what I recommend, where to put everything. And I'm going to teach you how to play because, as I said, as the creator, you know, I'm very committed to this game and I feel it's my duty and job and responsibility to make like a rule book video for you guys. And I, I would hope other creators would think that way too. You know, you guys are backing this and you're pledging for it, so I think I should be there for you to teach you how to play that game, teach you how to set it up, you know, for whatever you need, gameplay questions. So, now on to what this video is though. I wanna show you, cause there was a lot of people saying, wait a minute, there's no way all this can fit back in this box. Well, all the cards and the dungeon tiles and the House of Chance games, Guys, this is the Master of the Realm edition, and all of the content is inside that box. However, I'm going to scoop this in. This is what I've been talking about, and you've probably seen pictures of this. If you guys, if we have some new Crusaders here, don't worry, we're going to cover all this. These are fairly inexpensive, and I highly recommend storing your game in these. And um, I'm very good at like packing stuff and, and making sense of everything. And so tonight, today, I want to show you how I would recommend to, to store your game so everything fits and everything kind of makes sense. So, you know, when you're playing just Dungeon Crusade, you're going to have one box where you can pull everything from. Um, you know, you're going to have a box with just um, your cardboard miniatures in it. So I just like to, I like to be very organized with all my games, and I, I think you'll enjoy this. So this is going to be a big in-depth look into how to store Dungeon Crusade. Now, I've been really looking forward to this with you. And as I said, the game is printing, and I, I gotta tell you real quick that it was at 2.32 a.m. Saturday night. I was up, actually I've been playing um, one of the games that inspired me way back in the day, the Dungeon and Dragons game, Icewind Dale. I'm playing it on my PS4 now, and it is fantastic. If you have a PS4 or an Xbox or a PC, Play Icewind Dale. This, that was, I, I love that game. I love those old PC RPG games. And that and like Baldur's Gate, that was what really inspired me a lot, you know, for creating Dungeon Crusade. In those games, you control six heroes, definitely in Icewind Dale. Dungeon Crusade, the official way is to control six heroes, but you can play with three, four, five, or if you have the expansion, you can play Mega Dungeon Crusade, eight, 10, 12 heroes. Yes, you heard that right. So anyway, um, 
Check out Icewind Dale on PS4 or Xbox One. Guaranteed, you will love that game. Um, getting back on track, though, we're going to open up the box and show you everything, um, how, I, how I recommend to store everything for you, and just to make sense of everything. Because a lot of people did not believe, and I, until I showed them in the deluxe unboxing, everything will fit in this box. And then you use this for your markers, tokens, dice, cardboard miniatures, all that. And I actually have a new system, and you won't believe how much space is in that box, considering everything you get with Dungeon Crusade. So let's start this unboxing. And again, I'm very happy to be with you. And again, before I forget, there were so many nice comments. That really meant a lot to me, guys, more than you'll ever know. And um, just everyone, just there's so many people I can name. Just I love you guys. Thank you. And I'm just glad that we're, you know, now. Just wrapping this whole thing up. Very exciting. Okay, let's start with, before we get into all this, I want to say this. To say I'm OCD and obsessed and consumed with this game is probably an understatement. This is, as I showed you, the Avalon Adventure Board game. No, I'm not going to tell you how much I love this, and I think you're going to love this game. Um, but you notice, and I've mentioned this before, that's not going to fit in the box. Well, months and months ago, I caught this. And I talked to our project manager at the time, and I said, can you please ask the engineers to make this a bifold design? Because, you know, right now it's just a single fold, of course. So, of course, they were awesome Wingo games. I love you. Thank you for doing this. So, you know, this is, of course, the proof copy of the game. Proof copy you're seeing. They did put another um, fold in it, so you'll be able to fold that. It'll go into your Dungeon Crusade box. Everything is in there. I want to say that. Uh, this is, of course, the battle board we looked at for the Avalon Adventure board game. And it just makes it more immersive for you, more thematic. Um, this, I pulled this out to do that little demo I showed you. But there's the outside dungeon part, and then there's, or, yeah, the dungeon part, and then like an outside area for you. Christian Colbert, local artist, I work with him. Very awesome, and he, of course, will be back with all the other games we're working on. So, there we go, kind of like a 3D view of it. So, okay, let's get this game over here. And before we open this thing up, this is all of the token sheets, or boards rather, you know, that you're going to, um, you know, everything comes on. And it is a lot. So, um, you know, I talked to Frank. Hello, Frank, on Kickstarter. Um, Frank makes his own storage things like the, these really nice things I think he said out of birch and all that and I don't know how to make that stuff so I'm you know and myself and I know many others are going to be using the plastic compartment trays but I guess Frank does awesome work and I'm asking him to send pictures when he does the Dungeon Crusade one I'd like people to see his work I have a feeling it's going to look exquisite so as you can see bottom line there's there's a lot of stuff you're going to be punching you're going to be punching this game for a good while so that's what, you know, we're going to be talking about these next, and we're going to go really in-depth for you um, on everything in there. So I think you'll enjoy that. So let's see how this thing is packed up here. So let's open it up. I mean, I have this by memory now, how to do it. No, so right on top, oh, look at this, to Macaldar Skeleton Vault. Labyrinth of Solitude. Notice, this is the only dungeon board. There's two doors in here, okay, when I designed this. I know you got me talking Dungeon Crusade. You know I'm not going to shut up, right? Here's the interesting thing about this. There's two treasure chests in here. Sometimes there could be something in the, in the chamber, but there's traps here. So you're going to have to contend with two traps to be able to get to those two treasure chests. And you know there's risk and reward in Dungeon Crusade. So, sorry, I had to tell you that, of course, the skeleton vault. Um, I designed the dungeon board, and Damien Mamaldi um, painted this board, the final version. And Damien was an artist on 2015's RPG of the Year, The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. And that's what I forgot to tell you guys, sorry. Map of Avalon. I'll get you down here so you can kind of see this. There's Castle Blackwood. Um, these are cloth maps, and a very awesome guy named Lucas who lives in Germany. Um, I believe he said he works at a textile factory. 
he created, well, he made the fabric. You know, Damien, again, Damien, I gave him my prototype of Avalon. I was very passionate about creating this land. And what's cool is Damien, I think there's, where's, where's the tomb? There's a tomb of Kaladar right there. Um, Damien took my prototype map and basically somewhat like traced over it, kept all the locations, but of course injected his creativity and imagination into it. And it's just, it's amazing. But my point is a lot of, we said we're going to have these things. We'll go over here. You can see the, the Tower of St. Viticus that ties in with a quest. Um, House of Demons, Dungeon of Zul. That's actually a cult in the game. Wren's Crossing here. Tower of the Maidens for the, the Maidens of Witherbrook Forest. That's where they reside. Very nice tower indeed. Central Vision or um, Village of Witherbrook. Um, interesting story I wrote about Deadwood. Um, the villagers there, they used to live. Well, I'm not going to tell you, but that was a place. Ghost Isle used to be a village. I'll let you discover that in Avalon Adventure Board Game. Ruins of Ashenfall. Sorry, I got to shut up. But I love this stuff. Um, my point is, we are going to be selling these. And many people lately have been asking, hey, are you getting those cloth maps? When we wrap up Dungeon Crusade, I promise you we're looking into this. We're going to secure more of these cloth maps. And I want to thank people because that was just, I was very passionate. I remember sitting at our table years ago, sketching this whole thing out, and then I digitally created it as best as I could. And then, of course, Damien took it. But um, that means a lot to me that people would like to have this to hang in a wall or frame it. And so I just wanted to let you know we are going to be making that. There's up in the snowy north, there's Logan's Tower, Towel. That's where Albus, Heroes Fetch, have, comes from. Sorry, I'm going to shut up. But anyway, cloth maps are coming. If you want one, we're going to have them. So stay tuned. Sorry for derailing a bit. Um, okay, so back to our deluxe unboxing. And I'm sorry I keep going off, but I'm just very excited to be with you guys and just, ah, this game is done. Okay, so dungeon tiles are on top, right? Take that off. These Now, this is the um, expansion dungeons, too, or the dungeon pack. So you're, so this is all, um, you know, the, the ancient runes, Tomb of Kaladar, um, of course, comes with Dungeon Crusade. And then um, the expansion pack, or dungeon pack, I think it's called, and Pledge Manager, Castle Blackwood, Cavern of Lost Souls. Guys, that all fits in there very nicely. And something I want to mention, too, about um, Wingo Games. Here's um, one of, this is for the Ancient Runes. I'm very impressed with their, I can't, with their, if you can see this, with their work. Tiles are sitting nice and flat, no bending or warping. And I've had this for months now, months. Everything is solid, and I know some people were concerned about that. Nice quality materials, Wingo Games. Thank you. We greatly appreciate that. Okay, so you see on top when you store it, you're going to put these dungeon tiles. And then, of course, here is your dungeon UI board that goes on top. And hopefully you remember that from the videos. And then we have, of course, the village board. Open that up for you. Again, proof copy stuff. Everything is going to be a little brighter and even more vibrant and colorful when you see it. So you can see both of like your UI board and the village board goes on top. Let me move this over here so you can see it. On top, of course, the Crusader's handbook. And boy, I could write a story about the making this rule book. I actually really love doing this. And I did all the graphic design of it and everything. This was a labor of love. But it came out really, really nice. Very, very thorough in creating that. You know, it's Dungeon Crusade, I think, is a very unique and innovative game. So I think it called for a certain, you know, unique, uh, uniquely designed rule book. So the first half... And there's so many misconceptions where people just don't understand or don't take the time to understand. Your first section, this is broken down into sections, how I did that. You just read the first section. That's how to play Dungeon Crusade. And I even give diagrams and examples and everything. There was very nice, positive reviews from everyone. So thank you for the people who took the time. So, you know, you read that first, and then um, it breaks down each thing for the Avalon Adventure board game, 
the House of Chance games. But my point is you don't read the whole thing at once. That's, that's not how this was designed. You read just Dungeon Crusade, get your feet wet with that, get acclimated to it, then introduce different parts of the game into your play session. Sorry, I wanted to throw that out there. Of course, the scenario book. So I have that there. And again, this is the mat you're, this, you're seeing the Master of the Realm edition. So um, here is um, the Skulljack, painted also by Damien Mimolody. I gave him the prototype of what I designed, and he, of course, just... All of these artists are, like, not of this world. So there's that. And reverse side is your heroes versus monsters, where the heroes have to defend the Chapel of Light from the invading monsters. Again, Damien. Did, he did all the House of Chance games, by the way. Put your challenge deck there. So you see that stores there. Tower attack board that sits right there. And then um, kind of like the Adventures of Bravely the Knight, that sits on your cards. Look how nice that is. Look how much room, that's what I want to point out. Look how much room there is in that box still. You can put more stuff in there. Um, so there's the Adventures of Bravely the Knight. And I told people, um, you don't have to, but I recommend it. Get those little rubber feet. You can get them at the dollar store. And then I put, um, you know, mine on there. And what happens is, it, you know, it, it kind of makes everything level because of the spinner on there. So there's a little upgrade you can do. It only costs a buck. Okay, so then, as you can see, well, we're gonna pull, well, I can pull out some stuff for you. Um, you know that there's the game ships with normal difficulty monsters, right? There's an add-on for expert difficulty monsters and heroic. You know, their warfare values go up, their damage increases, um, their special abilities have a better chance of activating more health, so on and so forth. So what I do is I'll keep all of the normal difficulty on this side. Then notice over here in this corner, that's all of my um, expert and heroic difficulty. So that fits perfectly in there. And so that's what I'd recommend to do. So, so I hopefully, we're, since we're doing this in-depth unboxing, you can see um, everything fits very nicely. Um, what I did, though, I, I sometimes take some of the, the loot cards because there's 193 loot cards, and I, I put them there so everything sits nice. So there's your loot cards. Those are the monster cards. Let me, let me take some of this out so you can see more of it. Here. Hey guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. Yes, it's kind of long, but hey, I like hanging out with you and showing you what I can about the game, get you more acclimated to it, and just teach you more about it. Get that out of the sack. Okay, and we're going to move over here. This is now all this stuff here is, um, of course, the Guardian cards, tarot size. Um, there's something we can say right here. This. I love writing quests. I love like this thematic storytelling, especially, you know, with writing 259, um, 259 events for the Avalon Adventure board game. Oh, adventure cards, they're going to be bigger for you. I, um, these were small, like they printed them, tarot size. They're going to be a little bigger and the fonts will be bigger. So no worries on that. But the, this right here was what took a, a good while. Was um, I was very passionate about the Avalon Adventure board game. So these are all the adventure cards, and yes, they're double sided. Again, that you will never see the same game twice. While we're on quests, um, I wrote, I created all these NPCs and good factions, bad factions, um, other heroes in the land of Avalon. Um, if you got the dungeon pack, Dungeon Crusade, of course, comes with 30 unique quests. With your dungeon pack, you get another 30 tons more quest tokens, 60 unique quests. Um, and I think you're really going to enjoy the quest system I designed. You, of course, can create your own quest and scenarios. That was paramount to me. For people can, you know, create your own content, play it, share it with everyone. I'm dying to play your creation, so please let me know what you create, and I will post it, and I would love to play it. But um, it's another thing that took a while because I was just very, um, you know, I just love this stuff. So 60 unique quests in Dungeon Crusade. 
So quest cards kind of put all like those bigger cards back here. And then really, I don't think we have to take any more out, do we? We'll go over to this side. But, you know, I put various cards here. Like here, well, those are all the hero's special abilities. Turn that sideways so you can see it. So, you know, I have the six heroes from, dun from the Dungeon Crusade. But then there's the expansion heroes, too. There's all of the... Um, special ability cards. Here's all your encounter cards, 87 unique encounter cards. Now this one here, I'll put this down for this. What I do is I just take various cards. Like here is, um, oh, if you got the um, Master of the Realm edition with Skulljack, um, Damian Mimaldi again, we you get a custom deck of Dungeon Crusade playing cards to play with Skulljack. So standard on this side. That. So that's kind of cool. And then, so what I was saying was, I just stack various, you know, smaller decks together. There's the 30 unique treasure chest cards. There is your, sorry, I hope you can see that, tavern test card. Trap cards are right there. And then, of course, over here, um, these are your challenge cards for heroes versus monsters. And then what else do I have over in here? Oh, the... Hero card for Adventures of Bravely the Night. And you want to find that magic sword in the dungeon. Gives you a plus one to your attack rolls. Um, so I have that in there. And then here is the um, blessing cards. 30 unique blessings in the game. Um, and look, well, look what I pulled. Boom. Angel of Swiftness. Freddy Lopez. Um, I asked him to do the angels in the stained glass window. Beautiful art. Freddie, you're just, again, you're not of this earth. So that's, you know, I got the blessing cards in there. Um, mining, there's mining and crafting in Dungeon Crusade. There is the pickaxe cards, and it goes back to that. And then, of course, all of your hero cards fit in here. There's, of course, Albus's hero cards. And Gunther, if you're watching, yes, I'm going to do one especially for you, and there's going to be a pug. And Gunther has been a very good friend to me, so yes, I'll do I'll do one for you, my friend. So there's that, and of course all the hero cards, and this is all the expansion heroes, um, and the ones that come with Dungeon Crusade. Um, level one cards have the Create a Hero. We had twelve lucky backers, and there was absolutely no charge with this. And that's I wanted to say that with Grubus Games Unlimited. We'll always offer that content to our, to our, you know, fans of the game. You won't be paying for this. We want your creativity and imagination part of the games and help us shape the lore and, you know, in the worlds we create. So 12 backers, um, we work with them. They wrote a backstory for the hero they got. They got to name the hero, and it was a really awesome experience. Um, there's the cleric, Faith, her backstory, and I put, like, where... She hails from, or what they said, what village that she hails from, special abilities. And, um, of course, it has their name there for everything. Oh, I'm sorry, that's Jorah. What am I talking about? I need to slow Jorah Okart, priestess. Sorry. And, of course, Paul. If you're watching Paul, Paul um, created this. We, you know, we wanted people to have you know, their name in the spotlight because, they, of course, they helped make the game. Okay, so before we move on to that, and over here, I'm not going to pull all this out, but, you know, the smaller cards in the game. Here, as I said, these are your, I don't know which is which, but um, heroic difficulty, expert difficulty fits really nice on the side. And then all of your smaller cards here, they're, I'm not going to pull all these out, but believe me, they're in here. Your affliction cards, um, celebration day gift cards, all the mining cards are in there. What else? Secret room cards are in there. So everything fits perfectly in this box, as you saw, and there's still more room for more stuff, okay? I hope you're enjoying this extended look at everything in the game. Let's go over the boxes, and then I'll let you guys go. Hopefully you're not eager to go. Okay, so for these... Everything is starting to get quite disheveled here, but we'll get through it. I'm going to have... Um, oh, Scooter just walked in. Um, I'm going to have links in the description 
four of these boxes for you. To me, these are essential. I mean, I use these for all my other board games. I have a ton of these. Um, if you're going to do it like how I have it here, you're going to need two of these 37 space ones. And then, what's this one? 15? 1, 2, 3. Oh, six. Okay, 18 space. So you're going to need, you know, the 18 space, how I have it stored. You can find this stuff very cheap, especially on Amazon. So check for links in the description. I'll put those there. And then a very nice um, backer named Stephen. Hello, Stephen, if you're um, listening, watching. Um, Stephen sent me a link where he found, I guess, I still had, I've been so busy, guys, that getting back to the comments and everything, I have to look. But I will have it in the, in the description. He found like a 50 container or something crazy like that. So you may want to use that. But what I'm going to show you, I think, is ideal because it sets each part of the game aside for you. It just kind of makes sense and makes order of everything. So after you're done, I think, after we're done here, rather, I'll, I think you'll see what I mean. So let's open this up. And this one is, and I'm making sure... Questo or the mystery chamber tokens are hidden because I've been doing a good job of keeping those hidden from you. Um, this here is how you can just play right out of the box with Dungeon Crusade. This right here is what you're going to be using the most. So this is like your main box here, and we'll um, we'll do a flyover so I can show you everything. Um, and again, that's why this is so ideal. So you don't have, you know. Smaller boxes with other stuff. These 37 space, 37, let's see, wait, that's not 37. One, two, three, four. Okay, 36. Sorry, 36. Well, oh, you know what? I thought they would consider that. Never mind. But this will hold everything very nicely, and you can find it very easily. So, like, you have your level one, two, three, four monster tokens here for champion monsters for 1,000 gold, 500, um, 100 gold. Um, uh, bronze, silver, gold, um, empty chamber. You can find, sometimes find an empty chamber in the dungeon. Um, these are your raid tokens. I like that. That is some awesome art. Annika from Germany. Very talented young artist. I worked with her on those. Mystery chamber, secret room, your mining sites. Um, eight mining sites tokens go out on the board on the dungeon every game. However, you put it on unexplored, you could find a mining site, or this is not a mining site. So my point is, randomly generated each game for you. Um, trap tokens, you can put those there. Of course, there's that's a clear symbol. Of course, that's if your hero hits a trap. Lock picking tokens can go in here. You'll be using these a lot in the game. Very fun mechanic, I think. Um, these are like your quest things. Remember we talked about the books, open, closed, and all that, and and the Elder Globes are in there, too. There's, there. There's an Elder Globe for you. Elder Globe. Elder Globe. Starts out red. Complete quests. You turn it to green, signifying there's purity in the dungeon. Um, all of the um, in initiative tokens. So, you know, when you get, if you got the expansion pack, the base game, all editions come with one through six. Expansion heroes have 7 through 12, so you can play Mega Dungeon Crusade. And I know there's going to be people creating scenarios and quests for Mega Dungeon Crusade. Mark my words. Um, secret tokens here. I'm not going to tell you what that is. Kez, an artist, did a lot for this. You're awesome. 10 treasure chest tokens. So in the dungeon, there's 10 treasure chests that start out. You never know, randomly generated, risk and reward crates, juice tokens. And what are we over here? Oh, the markers here, these are for your damage markers. There is the um, battle tokens and warfare tokens are in there. Harvest bread, tracking tokens, when a guardian is tracking a monster, or when a, when a guardian is tracking a hero, um, these are used for like the village board to keep track of stuff. Web tokens for the shadow dwellers, torches, life force tokens, and then all your potions. Health potion, elixir potion, and what's that? That is the ochre juice, and then torches. Do I have torches somewhere else? Hmm. Oh, right here. So there you go. You have one actually open. Here. There. Battle tokens there. 
attack and defend side and your warfare tokens there. How do you like that? So that is your main box on how you can start, or you know, like how you can store everything like that. Okay, so now let's take a look at, we'll take a look, now I'm gonna set this down now because I just wanna do that flyover. Okay, with that there. Um, let's talk about this next. This is one of those um, 18 space ones. Get you over here, we'll do this. Okay, and uh, I'd highly recommend, recommend doing this. These are, of course, all the cardboard miniatures. You can see this holds everything perfectly. And you've noticed each one, like our skeletal grunts, they have, you know, each one has their own, you know, cell or box or, you know, whatever they go into. So I have, what's nice is there's this big one for, you know, ones like um, Magmus and Dreadthorn, um, of course, Banevik. Um, you know, Red Widow. So you can put all of those here, all of your, these are minions, by the way, sorry. These are minions, and then all of the heroes go right here. So you can see how nicely that works. So hopefully you can see how this is kind of like already making sense. You got your main box. Here's for your cardboard miniatures. And then let's take a look at, I know what we'll look at next. We'll look at this third one. This is um, the doors. Notice there's three variations of doors here. See how nicely all that fits in there? Um, we'll get to that in a second, why I have those there and, and these, these tokens. They're quest tokens. Um, the Runes of Eternity for the Avalon Adventure board game. Rejuvenation potions for the Avalon Adventure board game. Um, Bravely the Night. For the, um, for the Adventures of Bravely the Night. And of course, we saw that at the beginning. That's the um, flag for where the heroes are at in Avalon. And these are the tokens for heroes versus monsters. And so basically, oh, and these are the tracking tokens. When you're in, in the land of Avalon, you put these down to remember where your heroes have been. Because when you enter into an explored area, sometimes it's not good. And I'll leave it at that. Um, white plastic clips for your hero cards, and of course the dice. So um, basically, all of like the Avalon Adventure board game um, stuff and the stuff for the uh, Master of the Realm edition kind of goes in here. And so that's why I mean, you can keep order, you know where all of that's at. Doors, of course, go here. And what I have been doing is, um, if you caught this, I created a key system. A lot of the quests your heroes are, will um, undertake, that there's a key system in the door in the game. So yellow bases, there's green, blue, and red. And what those mean are um, to open those doors. I know you can't bash doors down in Dungeon Crusade. Sorry, you need the key. So like with green bases, you're going to need to find the jade key. Um, for the red bases, you're going to need to find the onyx key. You know, it's how it's red. It's all kind of color-coded. Um, for the the yellow or gold base doors, you're going to need to find the golden key to open those doors. Finally, blue bases, you're going to need the ivory key. And I really like the key system, and I think when you create your own quests and scenarios, I think you're going to really enjoy creating, you know, these quests where you're going to need, your heroes are going to have to find certain keys to gain access to certain chambers and areas of the dungeon. I don't know why that went out of focus. Let's try to get that back into focus. Okay, so that's that. And of course, all your doors um, right there. But that way, I kept this here because it, it's easy to find because what we're about to look at with all the quest tokens. So you have your colored bases for the doors. And then, of course, you just take the black ones off and then put the colored ones on. So all your doors for the game store there. Finally, and again, I hope you're enjoying this extended video with everything we chatted about. And I think you know I love chatting with you guys and teaching you more, and it's just a fun time. It's kind of relaxing in a way. This might be the best one to save for last. This is another one of those um, 36 space um, ones here. And this holds, of course, all of your quest tokens. And I'm gonna tell you, and there's even, look at all those quest tokens. 
as I said, with 60 unique quests, you need a lot of quest tokens. And I, I loved writing those quests for this game. Just, I got very creative with these. And I think you'll enjoy, mostly I, I think you'll really enjoy the stories um, that, you know, lead up to it. Not too long, not too short, just like the perfect length um, to get you into the quest. But this case, as you see, is just basically, that holds all your quest items. So um, that's what I would recommend for this. We'll take a few, and I know I'm not going to give you any spoilers, don't worry, but there's four of these. There's Freddy Lopez, there's a voodoo doll. And this quest in particular has, I'm not going to give you spoilers, but there's a really cool game mechanic that's with this, God, why is that going out of focus? There we go. With, that's associated with these voodoo dolls in the story I wrote. I think you're going to like that. Um, here's a chalice, and this is for, well, it's, some of the, the tokens will be used for other quests on other dungeons. So, you know, you're going to find different combinations how these are used. But actually, if you want a little history here, one of the first quests I wrote, like, years ago for this game is called A Mother's Request. And this mother goes to the heroes in the village and tells them that her daughter is deathly ill. And she talks about, um, this is for the ancient runes, that there's actually an area of the dungeon called the Well of Eternity. It has these magical properties in the water. But you need to have the chalice filled with this water for these magical properties, like healing properties, to work. So she tells the heroes that the chalice has been broken into two pieces. So there's the two... He comes there, the two chalice pieces. So the heroes have to find this, and then they have to take the mended chalice to the Well of Eternity to get the, the healing waters to help the woman's daughter. I hope you don't mind hearing some of this stuff. I love, um, love talking to you about all this. Lastly, I'll tell you this one. I can tell you more. I can tell you, let's look at, there's a vial of blood. This is for the Tomb of Kaladar. This quest in particular is called Noah, I'm not going to give you too much of this, but it's called um, Noah the Destroyer, and it deals with Castle Blackwood. The heroes are in um, Hunter's Watch, as I take you back over here. There's Hunter's Watch. So the heroes are in this area here, okay? And if we go north, there's Castle Blackwood. See, like that. So what this is, is these, um, so you see there's a whittling knife. And hopefully, you know what, this will maybe get your creativity going and imagination for what you'll create. So we have these two wooden figurines here, these two soldiers. So in the story that I wrote on the quest, this like little boy named Noah comes up to the heroes and he's got all this like, you know, oversized armor on and helmet and this massive sword. And he tells the heroes he's going back to Castle Blackwood to defeat the monsters because his great-grandfather was stationed there. He was a soldier there in one of the watchtowers, and he used to, on his night duty, he used to take his whittling knife and carve these very nice um, figurines for Noah. And so Noah thinks he's going to go there and retrieve these because, you know, he misses his great-grandfather, and he wants to have this as like a family heirloom. And so, of course, well, I'll tell you, I'm not going to tell you anymore, but I loved writing these quests. That's my point. So much more I could tell you. So much more. We'll be here all night. How about some holy water? Anyway, tons and tons of different quests. Ruby stone ring. Uh, the crown. Ruby stone ring. Scepter. So many things that you can probably think of just from that and create. Um, Freddy Lopez. How about the Book of the Dead? That's for, that's for a very cool quest. Guys. Whew. And I'm going to stop because I'll never shut up. Okay, so there you go. We have taken a look on how to pack up Dungeon Crusade, plus a little more. It's a little chatty, but it's okay, right? Why not? Okay, guys, listen. I am actually now putting together the dungeon, well, the monthly Dungeon Crusade Kickstarter update, but I wanted to wait because I wanted this video in it so everyone could see that because how you can pack it up, and plus you can hear about all this other stuff, too. All right, guys, I will be back with you soon. More updates. Um, hopefully, I'm going to get some more pictures. I asked our um, production manager if she could send some more over. Um, her name's Hetty. Thank you, Hetty, for everything you and your amazing team are doing. Okay, guys, I've got a lot of work. i got to pack all this back up now.
but it should only take a few minutes. All right, have a great night. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I will be talking to you very soon. Bye-bye.